your secrets if you really look at yourself you will be speechless what happened to being doctors and teachers what happened to being your brother's keeper nowadays kids more hi i'm shikana and you're watching band clap tv uh, yeah it's for my dreamers overachievers yeah it's our season Yo, I used to dream of many things, petty things, 24s and Chevy things, and wedding rings. Remember when I was 17, a clever team, my city, they beheaded the king. Inflate the scene, it's 26 and I'm trapping green. Had the scheme for the cheese, hustle, win or lose, I kept it cool. Summer breeze, rocking J's, heating my dungarees for money trees. Homie got conceited, tried to cheat the code of the streets. Now I'm 25, see a misery stretching wide. Uncle James tried to fight for his life, but took a dive. Death on me like wifey, thinking should I put suicide? No, I'm too committed, Gemini. With a grand serious mind, like I mastered the sun. Papa, don't play around. I could have been a bastard for one, but Papa stayed around. I'm at the door when victory comes. That is confirmed. Still, I won't forget the things that I learned as the world turns. Practice makes perfect. You have to be diligent about what you want. You have to apply yourself. You have to motivate yourself. You have to do it by yourself. And then you can do things for other people. Uh -huh. Come and ride with me. Uh huh. Side to side with yeah. me. As the world turns. Come on, take a ride with me. Uh huh. Side to side with yeah. me. As the world turns. I'm doing better now, sweat it down, got cheddar now, hit a smile on them, style on them and let them frown, now these hoes at me, wanna try to settle me down, rubber gold magnum, only time that I get around, I'm pocking this prime, punches hit like Beretta rounds, give this 10 east side nigga dish and Coletta rounds, you can eat your food, get barbecued, more better style, been a blues player, in a shadow, stay on the prowl, back in 2012, lost it all, was never frail, hearing 12 say I'd never prevail, locked in a cell, I never forgot that, looking shook his head when they see me in 2020, I'm winning for real, yeah, I mean, All right, y'all. So we back. Welcome to another Band Clap TV rent video series. <laughs> I hope that everyone is staying safe. I hope that everyone is doing well during this crazy, but also enlightening time that we're living in right now. It's crazy because I remember when I first started on my journey to consciousness back in 2011, 2012. And it was my first teacher, Okun, who used to talk about stuff talking about martial law and all of this other stuff that was supposed to happen down the line and then you had people like professor griff and even though this was still back in the mac lessons days with Tariq nasheed he would even drop some small nuggets here and there talking about the stuff that we're going through right now and it's crazy because a lot of my friends and a lot of the people that i would hang around they only looked at that stuff back then as conspiracy theory I don't think no one would have ever imagined that during our lifetime, we would actually have a martial law scenario like we're having right now. I don't think nobody suspected that it would actually happen. So it's just crazy that now the people who just a couple months ago, just a year ago, was looked at as conspiracy theorists. Now they're looked at as Nostradamus fortune telling master teachers, <laughs> you know. So for those people that they call gullible who actually did take heed back then and prepared yourself for the inevitable back then, you're straight now because you was able to take away the message from the messenger and you was able to prepare yourself effectively and thoroughly. And we can see the karmic aftermath of all of those people who doubted and who put those messengers down and calling them conspiracy theorists. Crazy part about it is during this time, like I've been saying ever since the death of our ancestor, Kobe Bryant, so many illusionary things are now being exposed for what they are and who they are. And the thing about it is, it's a situation where it don't take long. You know, you can be without cable for a couple months and you having to survive without cable. And during that second month, you're gonna kind of start to question, you know, do I really need this cable? I've been actually living better without the cable then with the cable so when that paycheck comes around and now you got to choose 
Do you want to pay for your own indoctrination again? Or would you rather use that money for something that's more empowering to yourself? And I feel like that this is a worldwide thing that's going on with people now. We start to see that we really, really live in a escapism type of mentality to where instead of dealing with the demon, which is nothing but yourself and your own issue, your own issues, which for the most part stems from you not being in touch with your inner child and being on the right soul path and the right soul mission. A lot of these type of people are now being forced to deal with those things and to deal with those issues. And I'm starting to get those readings from those people and how hard it is because it's something that you've been putting off and putting off for so long that if you would have took care of this issue while it was more in its infancy stage, it wouldn't be as hard now than it would have been back then. A lot of women are in relationships with these men that they know that they don't really love, in marriages that they know that the expiration date been expired on, but for some way or another, even though spirit may be telling you that you need to leave that relationship, you hold on because you got all of these different vices that you can do to kind of prolong you from making that decision that you should have made a long time ago. Meaning that instead of you being at home with your family, really trying to work this out and trying to make the best decision, some may choose to go out to the club and stay out all night, go on girls trips or go on these trips or just go out and do things to stay away from the house as long as you can. But in this time that we're in right now, it's forcing you to finally have that conversation that you've been supposed to have had with your significant other. A lot of men out here are in these different career paths and trying to get with all of these women of the night, draining their life force, and they're not doing anything to go up those three stages of enlightenment like you're supposed to, to be that king that you're supposed to be, who's instead supposed to be attracting that Obanani or that Akasha woman to him who's really going to have that help meet energy that his soul is yearning for and for these type of guys they're out of work now and not only are they out of work they can't go out to the clubs where they would pick up women they can't go to the bars where they would pick up women there's a curfew now so you can't really pump and dump because if you invite a woman over now she has no choice but to stay tonight and y'all have no choice but to get to know each other at least until the curfew's over <laughs> so there's a lot of BS that's being cut out in all of our lives, all of these distractions and all of these illusions that's been keeping us from doing what we're supposed to do. And all of those things have been vanishing away one by one. So I'm starting to see an influx of women reaching out for help, trying to find themselves spiritually and psychologically. And I'm seeing a lot of men reevaluating their lives and on a quest for that knowledge that if they still had these vices and they still had these different distractions, that knowledge wouldn't have been so alluring to them like it is now. So that's how I look at it. You got certain people that's meant to be doing some great things with their life path. And this time where everybody's kind of in this jail-like, house arrest-like situation, you finally got that time to go within and do that shadow work. And that's gonna wanna make you find people on YouTube who are on that type of wavelength. And with my solar return being now, or should I say my Saturn return, I'm glad that I can say that I have a plethora of videos that I've been putting out for the last two and a half years that if you're a person that's just getting into spirituality and you need some guidance, you need to hear from a person who's actually been through some things and has its own way of explaining those situations, at least in me, you kind of got a, a little roadmap that you can start with. Because like I say, I don't really call myself a teacher. I just call myself a divine messenger. And if my messages are being taken as a teachable lesson, then I humbly appreciate y'all. So I've been getting a lot of requests to go ahead and hit y'all with this part three. It seems like a lot of y'all love this storytelling series that I've been doing about Pumbagira and Eshu. And I can't lie, I really like telling these type of stories as well and it might be something new that I start doing because like I said I'm trying to figure out some things that I would like to incorporate in my Patreon so I've really been taking a close look at my analytics and really looking at the engagement and seeing how y'all are reacting to my videos and my live streams and stuff like that and the way it's looking when I do my podcast and rent videos like this 
these usually get the most views my podcast usually get the most views and then my rap videos come in as a very very close second a little bit below that are the live streams that i do that got the music involved and then the lowest number of views comes from the live streams that i do when i'm just on my phone so y'all let me know do y'all not like when i come online on my phone and make videos and y'all just like to hear me in this type of way giving y'all the podcast and the rant videos and also what do y'all think about the layout of my rant videos do y'all like these longer intros with these mixes or should i go back to the way i was doing with the five second intros and all of these things your feedback will really help me as far as the new direction that i need to go with my channel so all of your feedback and all of your comments just know whether it's on masterly foolish or whether it's on my personal channel i look at all of those and all of the feedback that i get from you all it helps me to make my channel better and also i may start taking requests as well of what type of stuff that y'all would like for me to touch on so these are the things that i've really been thinking about since i've been in the quarantine stand to yourself type of situation that we're all in which is the reason why i don't want to go too deep into that because i don't like dwelling on negative things and plus there's so many of my soul family that's already made countless numbers of videos about what's going on so with me i'm trying to stay on my regularly scheduled programming as always and as you know it's kind of been a staple for this particular series since we're already dealing with a lot of dark energy with Pump by Get Out and SU, I like to start things off with a positive and motivational message from one of the members of my soul family. And today is definitely no different. So here's a message of motivation coming from a sister that I just met not too long ago. And she has a business that she's working on. And I'll definitely tell you guys more about that once it comes along so now i'm gonna give the floor to my soul sister shekinah let's see what shekinah has to say hi i'm shekinah a word of encouragement for today when you feel like you're alone or you're by yourself don't worry don't cry don't fright that's the best position to be in to receive downloads from the universe as well as just everything of positive energy um, just don't doubt yourself don't ever doubt yourself during this spiritual path because if you do you will lose yourself and me personally I'm speaking from experience before my, my spiritual journey well I'm going to say spiritual awakening and also uh, during my spiritual awakening you know also make sure that you get all those religious beliefs or whatever beliefs that always held you back clear them all out because it's going to hinder you in your spiritual walk thank you wow okay okay that was very motivating right there <laughs> okay so i don't know how long this story is going to be i don't see it being that long because i did so much groundwork on that last video that this video right here definitely won't be that long but you know how I get when I start talking. So <laughs> so where we left off, we have our character, Mary, who is pretty much being the lady in red now. She works at this burlesque type of strip club in Brazil, and she's very, very captivating. But at the same time, she has a very, very bad reputation because unlike a lot of the other strippers that were there, she had a very, very no nonsense type of policy with her. She really didn't like guys touching on her like that which when things started off monetarily she would miss out because how a lot of those strippers would make money is through getting paid under the table to do sexual acts and things like that that since mary had the situation that she went through as a child she wasn't down for that so it was pretty much a what you see is what you get but when it came to her performance she never disappointed her work ethic was like none other and even though she wouldn't do nothing strange for some change people were very very satisfied and content with the show that she would put on every night now things weren't always peachy cream in this situation with mary because just like in any other establishment like this you always had people who would come in and just because they was able to get over 
and get away with certain things with the other girls and they thought that they could do and get away with those same things with mary they would be in for a rude awakening so to everybody else in the club she kind of had this reputation of being bipolar because she could be in a situation where she's giving the guy a dance or something like that and everything can be going good but the minute that guy tries to overstep his boundary just because he got a little money and a little notoriety in the club she would turn into a totally different being she would get real loud and vulgar with her mouth she would be hitting all on the guys and standing up to these guys as if she too was six foot 230 pounds all muscle and a lot of fights would have to be broken up because of her and this is another reason why the manager even though she really brought in a lot of money that knife that she had on her leg every night would always scare him because he don't know what day somebody is gonna come in and push her to that edge where she takes that knife off her belt and now she goes from being a financial jackpot to a huge liability because at the end of the day mary just wanted to dance and make money the older she got and all of those sexual rebellious things that she did in high school started to get less and less and less invigorating for her and all of this can be blamed on her issue which was saint she went on with her life the best way she could but no matter what she could never get saint out of her head even though this was a long ago situation that happened with her in high school her years of dealing with those thirsty dudes at that club even though some guys may have came close during that time she never really met a guy who was able to quote unquote break that imprint that saint had on her and deep down she still yearns for that day that they're gonna meet each other again maybe one day he's gonna come into the club and she's gonna be able to show him how mature she is now and maybe they'll be able to finish what they started on that prom night but there was always this lingering negative feeling in the back of her mind she always thought that maybe he's gone on to have a successful life too maybe he was able to get out of the game that he was in and now he has a really really good job some college degrees maybe he has a wife and maybe he has a family so maybe when he sees her he's not going to see that innocence that he saw in her in high school because up to this time in her life she'd have been through a lot of shit and she's had to do a lot of dirt and had to do a lot of stuff just so she can survive and help her and her family out financially and she always thought in the back of her mind maybe all of this it's just a fairy tale and what if when i do see him he rejects me because of the life that i'm living and he never wants to have anything else to do with me again but fortunately those negative thoughts never really sunk in with her and being honest with you that overwhelming feeling that one day he might come there and they lock eyes and she puts on the greatest show that that place and he has ever seen above all else is what actually motivated her to get up every night and go there now on the flip side with her being the gypsy as well while she's doing the things that she do at night at the strip club during the day she's doing a lot of reading she's doing a lot of learning because the other gypsy women that she hung out with were into different occult knowledge so they would teach her a lot of things and she started to go on a journey where she too would get in touch with that baby Oshun that lives inside of her something that's the reason for all of her great talents interest sex appeal beauty and overall aura but i said that i'm gonna be talking a little bit more about saint in this one because see when i really started to dive in the mysterious energy of the su exu the energy was very very interesting and with su always being that very very inquisitive and intelligent orisha it only makes sense that su was put in a very very challenging type of situation with his upbringing because at heart Eshu loves challenges and Eshu loves things like puzzles and mysteries and really really hard conundrums that most people would give up on but even though it may take Eshu a little while he always ends up coming out and finding the answer so with this you have a path of Eshu's who are also warrior gods simply because Eshu's normally have a really really hard upbringing I mean look at Michael Jackson for example remember how in my first video breaking down Michael Jackson I showed you how baby Michael Jackson when he was with the Jackson 5 represented that issue Papa Legba when he was a child and we don't even got to go back over all of the horrible things that Michael Jackson had to go through in his life as a kid or number two you have the people who have 
the soul of a baby issue. And those are people like me, Aaliyah, Nicki Minaj, Biggie, and anybody else who has a Virgo moon. And these people tend to be super curious. They just want to go and do stuff. And at heart, they're like some of the biggest detectives, always trying to uncover and analyze every small single detail until they get to the bottom of whatever mystery they're trying to solve. I told y'all, man, my inner child is like the baby Encyclopedia Brown. So when I heard the story about Biggie and how Biggie grew up in a middle class type of upbringing, his mom always bought him the newest video games. She was extremely loving, spoiled him like crazy. But it was something about those dudes up the block that always had the break beats playing and the boom boxes on that was playing this really dope music and people outside rapping and selling drugs and stuff all the things that back then you would consider yourself cool and hip and these are all things that baby issues and just issues in general are known for so it made a lot of sense especially with biggie being a gemini son as well two mutable signs that when he finally did hop over the fence and went over there to the other side to the dark side where all the thugs and the gangsters and the drug dealers and the pushers and the players and the pimps it was like once biggie got in you would almost forget the person that he used to be because with him being that virgo moon he was able to analyze from afar all the ups and downs that went on over there and secretly he was plotting and putting things together in his head so that when it's his time to go over there he's not going to get caught up like how he saw a lot of the people over there would do he's not going to get locked up for doing something stupid because he wasn't thinking straight. So everything that he did out of that curiosity, he did it to the fullest. He really did have a pistol and was selling drugs and stuff like that. And for the most part, he did it without getting caught. And then he jumped into the rap scene, made millions of dollars. And some people would say that Biggie was the greatest rapper or the top five greatest rappers to come out of New York. Now, the reason why I kind of went on that tangent about Biggie is because in a lot of ways, this is how the baby SU came up. He had a very, very loving mom who at an early age seen the great potential that her son could have. And deep down inside, it kind of hurt her that she was never really able to give him the life that she knows that he and his older brother deserved. But just like Mary's mom, she did the best she could. His dad was a well-known hustler. So just off of the name of his dad, when it came to a lot of situations where Eshu could have got hurt or he really could have had something bad happen to him, the OGs a lot of the times would really, really stand up and speak up for him. Now, in this lifetime, Eshu was playing the Allegua role because he was supposed to be the good kid in the family. And his older brother was more of the rebel in the family. And he did a lot of rebellious things without thinking and he slowly started to fall into his father's footsteps of hustling out in the streets. But without him having a game plan and without him having some real guidance, Saint's older brother would get into a lot of trouble with the law. And sometimes due to his dad's pull in the streets and with the police department, he would be able to get him out of certain things. But there was also a lot of times where they would be struggling for money and stuff like that. And he just didn't have it to spare so those times his older brother would have to stay in jail and his worried mom would think that since he was able to stay in jail and have some time to sit and think about the wrong that he just did maybe that would change him and when he would come back to the house he would act right and be a better example for his little brother and teach him the right way how to live life and go through things but unfortunately that was not the case he would just get out of jail hook up with the same cronies that didn't mean him no good anyway and he would go out and do this crazy stuff and get into a lot of trouble now his dad would try to talk some sense into him and sometimes he would think that he was getting through to him but with saint's older brother it was just something about that life that he just couldn't give it up but let me not sit here and say that all the times were bad because there were some good times too and the thing about it is even though saint's mom always thought that his older brother would be more of a bad example for him she didn't understand but saint was learning the ins and outs of the game through his own brother it was just that saint was a lot more quiet and he was a lot more reserved than his older brother and since he was so quiet and reserved people really didn't look at him as anything special and he really didn't see an incentive to change that about himself now like i said 
he would learn a lot of things from his older brother mostly all the things not to do all the types and archetypes of people not to hang around all of the archetypes of women that he needs to stay away from because while he would be in jail secretly if saint could get on the phone and talk to his brother he would and he would tell him all of the horror stories that he's seen people go through in jail to the point where su made up in his mind that jail is just something that he never ever ever wants to go to that's an experience that he never ever wanted to have which means that he's gonna need a very very special plan to do the things that he wanted to do so that he won't get caught now the thing that really really excited little saint are like i said when things was going good things were going good all those times where saint's dad would be away trying to make a way legitly to care for his family he would be gone for two or three or four days on end and saint's mom would have to be left to doing the duties and taking care of the house the best way she could and there were days where the hustling went good and saint's older brother would come home with big wads of money in his pocket which he used to help to pay for the bills and the rent and all of that stuff which were all things that saint's mom didn't approve of and sometimes he would lie and say that the money came from saint that he got a little summer job or he got a little work study job from his school or something and he was able to scrounge up some money and since they were in need she would have no choice but to accept the money now another thing that really really interested Eshu with that type of life is simply the swag that his brother would have his big brother would always have designer clothes on the newest designer shoes on and in the cut observing Eshu would see how he would get a lot of positive and mostly negative attention with that a lot of times he will come home bloody with one shoe on because somebody done jumped him and robbed him so seeing stuff like that saint never really got an affinity for synonymizing different pieces of jewelry and having on different articles of clothing and all of that he never synonymized those things with confidence and being honest with you he kind of liked his mysterious aura that he started to create for himself because he was able to do things and no one would suspect that it was him that was doing those things so he was able to stay low key and low profile unlike his brother who was always getting caught because he either had a big mouth or one of his homies set him up or one of his girls set him up or he was just sticking out like a sore thumb in the streets with all that jewelry on and designer clothes and shoes on so saint started to devise a plan the older he got but he knew that in order for him to be able to pull this off number one things at the homestead can't really change meaning that if he's going to be hustling his grades in school can't drop and he's going to have to figure out some type of way to be able to still get his hustle on when it's high time when he's supposed to be in school without his parents finding out about it and the next thing is he needs to find a really 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 trustworthy tribe of friends that'll have his back that'll be able to lie for him if need be and for the most part who he'll be able to trust when it comes to loyalty now one thing that he learned from his dad and his brother was that money talks and if he had people that were on the payroll or if he was able to provide a service or a product that was good but with a lower price and he was able to strike a deal with certain people he would be able to use that as leverage so this is what he would do with his teachers that he ended up putting in his back pocket and when it came to the game all those ogs who was protecting him when he was a lot smaller those ogs along with a few of his dad's other old running buddies would have these card parties where they would get together and talk about the old days and play cards drink some beers have a little cigar and during these times when the ogs got drunk they would tell these elaborate stories and they would be laughing and giving up all kind of game so those times where they thought that saint was asleep he would be on the top step where they couldn't see him and he would just be a fly on the wall and a sponge he found out all of the secret routes and all of the different tactics and just nothing but old school game that he was draped with so even though this is a 14 15 year old teenager he had the smarts of a mob boss or a kingpin and then with his mysterious type of aura that he had he was like the perfect silent assassin that no one would ever suspect now the main thing that he learned as a child not only when it came to observing he learned about how to communicate with different people in ways where they felt safe to display any type of information to him 
that he needed them to. So when he got around the pushers and the gangsters, even though he kept his originality and stayed quiet and reserved, he was able to manipulate his own aura and have that aura of a gangster to where he'll be able to sit in on very, very important conversations and be able to know things like when the block is too hot and cops are going to be swarming around and making sure the kids aren't outside and that they're in school. Different things like what women not to mess with because they're known for setting dudes up. And I'm talking about girls that went to his school that was on the low messing with a lot of these older men that was in the streets. And for the most part, he was able to transfer this to women as well. And when it came to women, it was so easy for him to entice a woman because he was already the quiet reserve kid who had this mysterious aura about him because all the other kids that were quiet and reserved would get picked on and get beat up by the bully and all of that and even though the bully might joke around and say a few things to him it never got to a point where it was a fight because like i said in my last video he was supplying him with a product that was just too valuable to end that business arrangement that he made with them and plus since he kept his mouth shut the girls knew that well at least i know that if i sleep with this guy nobody would know about it because he's not gonna go all around the school and tell everybody which was a really really big thing but it was kind of like a fly getting caught in a spider's web and the more that fly tries to squirm away the deeper and deeper it gets caught that's what would happen when these girls would get caught up in saint's web but see there was something about saint that was different from his big brother see his big brother would be one of those dudes that would pump and dunk which deep down really wasn't SU style but he really really did love women and women would attract themselves to him so saint would indulge with them and try to make something work but to him these women were very very boring and to his business and his secret enterprise that he had going on but find that these women are more of a liability because he would see how nasty and how these women would flip the script when he would tell them that it's over and he knew that if these women would have found out what he actually did to make money, they would spill the beans in a heartbeat just off a of spite that he don't want to be with them no more. And he seen that happen too much with his big brother. So when it came to women, he had a totally different outlook on them than the average high schooler. And he knew from jump that the ideal woman for him would have to be number one, a woman who kind of came up in a really rough upbringing like he did so that she would kind of understand his family dynamic because i mean a lot of situations when he would try to bring girls home even though they would be attracted to him they wouldn't necessarily be attracted to the things that they saw when it came to his family and all of that that they would end up no longer being interested anymore secondly he knew that the ideal woman for him would be somebody who would need to be able to defend themselves and not be so much of a damsel in distress simply because one thing that he definitely made up his mind that he wasn't going to do is to fight another guy for a woman and number three he knew that he was going to need somebody that not only wasn't going to judge him but also someone who had a little street in him as well and knew how to quote unquote maneuver certain terrain when it came to the streets because that would be the only way that she could truly be a help meet to him at least for now so the older and older that saint got and the closer and closer his group of running buddies got they went from small time to big time in no time <laughs> and this is the thing with saint and his running buddies even though the main commodity was different forms of narcotics and leafy greens saint would purposely keep his ear to the streets and find out what are some things that people need that is kind of hard to come by and he would find a way through his networking connections that he would make along the way and he would find a way to get those things in bulk and distribute them out to his homies and they would make bank selling those things to the people who needed them so it got to the point when that secret money was coming in and those bills were getting paid it got to the point where saint's brother no longer had to lie because saint had a quote-unquote job for real now now during this time saint really didn't have trust for no one really because of the way he grew up so until he got busted he didn't even tell his brother what he was doing because he thought in his mind that maybe his brother would be jealous that he had such a well-oiled machine that he would end up finding some type of way to sabotage it because since his brother liked being so flashy he thought that his brother may be jealous or envious of him that he's able to do the same thing that he's doing but on a larger scale and he's not getting caught 
nobody knows that it's him i mean saint had a lot at stake <laughs> so this leads us back to when saint turned into a senior in high school and pretty much everything was running well like a well-oiled machine everybody knew their place everything was cool that was until that fateful day when mary walked up to saint and this is when things started to take a turn for the worse because see what saint didn't realize was even though his friends were very very thorough when it came to the streets when it came to dealing with women uh, they weren't so bright i would say especially when it came to a girl like mary who even though she's a 18 year old she got the mindset and the psychology of a 25 year old and until this time they would just all come to saint and laugh and talk about who that bitch thinks she is i tried to ask her out and she said no she ain't shit her pussy probably ain't hitting on none no way you know how these dudes talk when women reject them so all this time you know saint was cooling it he was quiet observing and looking at the type of dudes that she did give a chance those dudes who were secretly on his payroll and they big mouth would come back and tell him everything that mary would do and all of that so unlike saint's friends who were super thirsty saint devised a plan and as we see in that last video his plan went off without a hitch but one thing that he really realized about mary that out of all the women that he's dealt with to this point it was something about mary that just made her seem like he's known her for years he couldn't really put his finger on it but he knew that in order for him to have a very very strong unit when it came to him doing what he was doing he knew that when it came to the women they definitely need to be like mary and he never forgot her but the one thing that he didn't prepare for was that just like every issue that represents that baby jesus saint had a judas iscariot that was on his team a judas iscariot who earlier got rejected by mary a judas iscariot that found out that she gave saint a chance and that saint was able to do something with her that he could only dream of and out of pure jealousy and hatred this judas iscariot started to snitch and let the cat out of the bag and you think Eshu was a bad boy then it was at this moment where saint felt the most vulnerable it was at this moment where saint felt the most betrayed and this is when he really really made it up in his mind that he truly can't trust nobody because man this really really hardened his heart because he never thought that a chick would come in between him and his well oil money making business but he also had to remember i mean after all he was dealing with street niggas and street niggas do grimy shit i mean that's what happens when you're in the streets but these are things that young saint just didn't fully fully understand just yet i mean he would hear the stories but this is the time in saint's life when he was actually going through some of the pain that the ogs went through and for the most part some of those ogs that were still alive sometimes he would still go to them because at this point in the game the ogs was pretty much passing him the torch because you know when it comes to the ogs you can't really hide nothing from them so even though on one end saint was always low-key the ogs was watching but since he wasn't causing up a ruckus they just decided not to tell his dad because he knew that that would hurt him but it kind of sucked because when it came to saint's dad even though he was out the game for a while you know what they say you're never truly out the game and some of that old stuff that he thought he got away with back in the day ended up catching up to him and that's how saint's dad ended up getting locked up and the hurt that saint's older brother went through because of his dad being locked up was spiraling his older brother out of control and all of these things really took a toll on saint's mom who ended up falling ill so emotionally saint he was going through a lot i mean even though he did make good grades in school and he really did deserve his high school diploma but since a lot of his teachers got caught up in the scandal because his friend snitched all of that was revoked and out of a fit of rage saint decided that he wasn't gonna go back to school and he wasn't gonna go to try to get his diploma now out of all of this rage that saint had the one thing still stands he did not want to go to jail and even though the ogs really looked out for saint and helped him in a way that he would be forever grateful for because he could have really got into a lot of trouble because of what his ex-friend did but i mean a lot of things just ended up being hearsay simply because saint was never caught with any products or anything and when the police officers and people would ask about saint they had nothing but good 
and positive things to say about him because he always kept his nose clean. So for a while, Saint went into this dark night of the soul. He was in this hermit mode, trying to figure out what he was gonna do, how he was gonna revive his hustle. During this time, while he was locked down for a few months, he really started to think things over. And in the jail, there was this older guy that was into things like occult science and astrology and even some conspiracy theories. He ended up really befriending this guy and this guy would put him under his wing and teach him a lot of knowledge about dark magic and everybody else in the jail thought this guy was a crazy conspiracy theorist but saint always curious to learn new information was all ears and every time that they could link up and talk he would give him some books to read some things to practice and pretty much once he got out he was able to do some of that magic to free himself of the charges that he had because they couldn't really find any concrete evidence and even though this is alleged through the grapevine oh that judas iscariot who snitched oh yeah he got what was coming to him in a very very major way and this really really set the precedent and eshu aka saint started to get a reputation in the streets as a very very important but very feared individual it got to the point when he got out the only people that he would really have around him were ruthless killers who through his art of manipulation were able to do things at will for him he was able to braid in the black magic with his hustling and people who would do him wrong paid very very dire consequences because at the end of the day he never forgot that feeling of vulnerability and betrayal that he felt and he vowed to never ever ever have to feel that pain ever again and when it came to women he treated them the same way a pimp would the women that he dealt with had a certain purpose in his life at the time and if they didn't want to serve that purpose he was quick to let them go because with women he got bored extremely easy as soon as he felt like he could figure them out so at this point saint was far from being a saint <laughs> the thing about it was saint had a lot of respect when it came to the streets because of his high morality code his no nonsense no bs type of attitude and one thing about saint he never forgot about the underdog so he was always willing to help brothers in need whether if it was helping them pay their bills helping them get food for their kids helping people's parents keep their houses and keep their rent paid well saint wasn't necessarily looked at as an evil person because people can see that inside he did have a good heart but he went through so much in his life that he just had this not to be effed with type of aura about him which made him feared and the thing about it is that saint would go this reputation would follow him and it wouldn't take him long to use his observation skills and his magic and awareness to be able to case out where he's at learn the system learn the loopholes and the chinks in the armor of the system and be able to exploit it for his benefit and then be able to come in set up shop and before long he's the done daughter there too so one particular night there was some bs that went down when it came to one of the women that was in saint's stable and there were a lot of cuts that were made to the team so now him and a couple of his running buddies devised a plan to try to get some new recruits and one of his homeboys told him about this club that was up the road that had some really really cute but low self-esteem strippers there that may want to get on the program just to make some extra money so he was like cool i don't really do strip clubs like that but I mean, if it's a business purpose and I want the baddest women on my arm to make this money, I mean, might as well. Sounds good to me. So he got dressed, got suited and booted, put on his nice top hat, put a cigar in his mouth, and him and his boys went out to this club. So they get to the club and none of the women there are really catching Saint's attention like that. I mean, they kind of look like the same women that he sees all the time on the streets anyway. But then all of a sudden, the announcer yells out ladies and gentlemen the moment you've all been waiting for introducing the lady in red now this is gonna be the first time in about seven years that saint and mary was in the same building at the same time and for some reason ever since the morning mary intuitively knew that tonight is gonna be a good night and it's gonna be something that's gonna happen unexpected but very very wanted so she was already a little nervous but you know, usually once she gets on stage, all that nervousness goes away. But when she did her pose and the music was about to drop, she looked to her right. And even though Saint 
looked a whole lot different than he did in high school. It was like intuitively, she wasn't really sure if that was him, but on the inside, her inner self knew that that was him. And she kind of froze for a minute. Now, Mary, on the other hand, it took Saint a little bit longer to realize who she was. But the reason why Mary froze like that wasn't just because of who she was looking at, but also because she overheard one of her strippers that she worked with talking about that they gave these dudes a lap dance and during the lap dance she could hear them plotting to kill some guy named saint because of a situation where a woman lied on saint that they were messing with and the thing about it was she hadn't heard that name in so long and she knew that that name was a very peculiar name so even though she didn't want to get her hopes up she wanted to see for herself who this saint was that they were talking about and when she found out and when she saw him for the first time in seven years, something in her reverted back to the way she was in high school when she went over his house. And it's like all of those feelings came back. But at that point, she knew that she had to do something because there was no way she was going to let something happen to the love of her life yet again. So she did something that no one in the club ever thought that she would ever do. She changed up her routine because she knew that she needed to be stealthy with this, but she had to get his attention because this was important. So she hopped off the stage doing her performance, dancing really raunchy and fanning off all the guys who thought that it was safe to touch her and rub on her since she's changing her routine. But no, because she had tunnel vision and she saw Sank there chilling in VIP with his cigar and some rum and coke and for free gave him the most sensual lap dance that they ever seen. And even though everybody else was very captivated and enchanted by her body and all of that stuff before the dance ended she whispered in saint's ear and told him that his so-called running buddies were plotting to kill him and it was all a misunderstanding and a setup now at this point saint didn't know whether to believe mary or not but it was something deep down inside that suggested that maybe he should listen to this one so while his homeboys wasn't looking because they was too distracted with mary's performance he slipped out of the club without them knowing that he was gone and with a little charm she was able to get saint's whereabouts out of his homeboys and found out that he stayed in a little house at this crossroad not too far from where she worked at and then she said in a very evil snake-like voice if you do any harm or if you go anywhere near saint and try to kill him karma is a bitch and you looking at her now while she's saying these things these dudes are just super in a daze watching her dance and all of that stuff don't know that she's putting a whole spell on him <laughs> so they don't care they don't heed it any mind and they end up leaving the club trying to figure out where saint went and decided that well if he went back home we'll just catch him there and finish him off unbeknownst to them mary did a protection spell on saint that if they try to find out where he live at they won't be able to find his house unbeknownst to mary once saint got home he did a spell that if his homeboys was really trying to kill him that it reverses back to them so unfortunately he got up the next morning and found out that his two homeboys got killed by a drunk driver and the car was total and even though he was mad he felt blessed because if that strange but beautiful stripper girl didn't tell him what was about to happen he too would have been in that car and he would have ended up suffering the same fate and once he woke up and he sobered up this is when he started to put two and two together and this is when he started to kind of be pissed off at himself because he was like man why didn't i put this together and figure this out a lot sooner damn and while he's over here beating himself up on the inside because he felt like that even though the love of his life saved him from what would have been either a brutal killing or a brutal car accident mary being the gypsy and having now other forms of income now she only comes on random days because now she's only really doing it because she loves to dance not necessarily anymore because she needs the money so at this point he's feeling like he's never gonna see her again but right when he was about to lose all hope the unthinkable happened and i want y'all to put in the comments what y'all think is gonna happen <laughs> i kind of want to make this like a interactive story thing <laughs> because even though um this may not have happened for real getting into the energy of pump by get eye and issue i'm always hearing these adventures and these stories about how they look out for each other and it's a really really beautiful thing you know when you a guy out here and you really trying to get it you trying to hustle and then you meet a woman who got that same type of go out there and get it type of attitude but she's feminine and she's sexy with it and y'all can work as a team 
man, that's really something. That's really, really something. So it's getting extremely hard for me to do these type of videos with this um, epidemic that's going on simply because it's hard for me to find places where I can record because everything is closed down. The only reason why I was able to record this one is because I was able to get a room, but normally I'm on my nomad shit. So you all support will be very, very instrumental in helping me be able to make these type of videos and podcasts. As I always say, if you are interested in getting a nail chart consultation with me, be sure to email me at shop Meliamar at gmail.com shout out to sister shekinah for that positive message earlier in the video and i can't lie i really like the way this is going <laughs> i was supposed to end it on this one but i'm like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm kind of drag this out for a little bit spirit don't want this to to end just yet because it was like while i was telling the story and while i was talking the story just would not end and i'm like yo like what's what's going on but you know everything happens for a reason and i appreciate y'all for always supporting me let me know if y'all like these type of stories and like i say this is just something to show how energy flows and it's not supposed to be taken super super literal because we know these pumbagiras and these su spirits all had hard lives and if i were to really really sit down and go through all of them man that would take all year <laughs> so be sure to always follow me on instagram bandclap tv facebook bandclap tv make sure on youtube that you're subscribed and the notification bell is lit and it's ringing i've been hearing that a lot of people haven't been notified that i'm dropping the video so just make sure you periodically check on my channel and see that i drop anything new like i say man i really in this time that we're in right now like i always say help and support your fellow soul family member if it ain't no time before that we need to come together this is the time <laughs> this is the time so i appreciate y'all i love y'all as always and band clap tv we out and no matter what stay shining stay shining y'all stay shining